Today I'm going to show you my updated Halo Infinite settings, what I recommend, and some of the gear that I'm using as well as the button mappings and paddle mappings that I have. Since it's been a few months, I told you guys I was going to do this earlier in the tip series, and it's high time we start talking about some more settings, because the pro scene has definitely been experimenting around. So let's hop right in. If you're a brand new player, I recommend Bumper Jumper or Hell Jumper. Hell Jumper, especially if you're coming from like a left trigger ADS game, potentially an Apex or a Call of Duty. But those are just great options. If you have paddles or if you claw, it doesn't matter. You can pick any uh, setup that's most comfortable for you. When we hop into our options here, I like hold the crouch. I talked about this in the first video. It allows you to do Gandhi hopping. Gandhi hopping is not a big deal in this game, but um, crouching in your strafe kind of is. And if you're doing the toggle crouch option, you may just have to put more inputs in and I don't necessarily know if it's, it's worthwhile to, to do that. So right off the bat, I'm still using Bumper Jumper. You see this custom layout here because I have mapped to the right D button, Drop Weapon. I don't know if this is going to end up getting nerfed or not. We'll just have to wait and see. But some of the Mangler Drop Weapon stuff that you can do is so critical and important that I think you should have it mapped. It's set to switch equipment, which you don't really need to worry about in multiplayer. If you're doing single player stuff, of course, you'll want to keep that in mind. But having the ability to drop your weapon is kind of important, I think, at least right now, depending on how competitive you want to play the game. Maintain sprint is one I really recommend that you guys keep on. If you change elevations, like if you're going up or down a ledge and you're sprinting, it keeps sprinting. If you jump in the air and you're sprinting, you don't have to press the button once again. There may be some arguments for people who really, really crave like that ultimate manual input, but I think it just adds one extra element that you have to be thinking about that strategically only comes into play a handful of times. Now, I could be wrong if some of you are die hard, want that setting turned off, you let me know, but I think it's something that uh, I recommend keeping on. Auto clamber is one I found I really like having off. Essentially, with it turned on, if you're pressing towards a ledge, your Spartan's just going to clamber up it. And there are circumstances where you may be gunfighting and then you accidentally get into a clamber, which can get you killed. You're stuck in an animation for a while, and that's just not what I want. Whereas with it turned off, I can always choose when and how I'm going to clamber up objects. So I highly recommend that you turn that one off and just start practicing pressing a button when you want to clamber, and that will prevent any of those accidental clambers, which we just don't want to have happen. Step jump I've been playing with it on and I really love it. This is a setting I wish we had in older Halo games and essentially it just lets you jump up low-lying edges if you're touching them. If you played older Halo games you know to get on something like this you'd have to do a big floaty jump. Whereas now if you're touching the ledge, press the jump, you're just going to go up that distance. Extremely useful for peeking, but be careful because you can still do the larger floaty jump if you're not touching the object or if you hit it with too much momentum and kind of mistime it like that. Sensitivity, dead zones, all of that good stuff that everybody loves to talk about here. I am still playing on a look Excel of 5 with a sensitivity of 5 and a look sensitivity for uh, the vertical also set at 5. I am seeing some pros start to do the 5-5 five, five, or maybe a 6 going half a point or one full point above their sensitivity because it feels like the vertical sense is not one to one. That's really frustrating. I want them to be one to one. I've still been doing 5-5 five, five just because I don't want to throw off too much of my like muscle memory. But I'm definitely thinking I'm going to start practicing on 5-5 five, five and see if it feels a little bit more uniform. If anybody has some further clarity on if there is a difference between these, I would love to know because one to one is, is a big deal for me. And just looking at this UI, doesn't it look like the little one above it sits a tiny bit more to the right? These are the conspiracy theories, people. The dead zones and input threshold, probably the most talked about part of Halo Infinite settings. The best explanation on YouTube by far is Shyways. I'm gonna put a card on screen right now. It'll be linked in the description. Please check it out and watch it. Best explanation of how the center dead zone and axial dead zone work and the overlap that they share with one another. I've been trying out the theory that you set your center dead zone to zero and then you set your axial dead zone as low as possible without getting any stick drift. I have an old Xbox One Elite controller, and looky here with these loose sticks, I'm already drifting on my look stick, and if I actually set my controller here, I'm not touching anything right now, that is drift. When I'm playing, this doesn't tend to come into the equation. I don't tend to actually run into drift very often. Maybe if I'm holding an angle or something, this can get me in trouble, but that doesn't happen very often in, um, you know, just pugs or solo queue, which is the majority of what I play in ranked anyway. So you set those as low as possible without drift, and then you've got the maximum responsiveness that you can have. Max input threshold allows you like how long it takes until you hit the maximum acceleration curve. For the movement, I like having it maxed out because it lets me hit my strafe speed much faster. And it's 
very minor. I can't think of a downside of running at 15. A lot of pros are using that higher setup. And then on the look thumbstick, I like a 1.5 so that I'm not dealing necessarily with that full max acceleration till I definitely am pegging the stick as far as possible. Let's talk about video for a second. I've dropped my FOV to 100. I tried playing Halo out on 4x3 resolution and I actually kind of liked some of the experience. You can check out the previous video linked on screen to find out if it gives you an aim advantage and if it's something you want to try if you're playing on the PC. Dropped it to 100 from 103. This is the sweet spot for me. You'll notice a lot of pros are running 100 or right around here. 103 is what I use in all PC FPS games that I play with mouse and keyboard, so this was not big of an adjustment, but I found a little bit lower of an FOV helps me see targets more clearly. I'm playing on a GTX 1080 Ti, so you'd think you'd be able to run this game at like a low setting at a normal resolution, but I have to drop my resolution scale all the way, set a max frame rate of 144, because that's what my monitor supports with a minimum of 60. And then uh, I also limit the inactive frame rate if I'm alt tabbing or something like that. I have my quality preset to low, except for the texture quality, which I have set to high. Everything else remains pretty much on the default low settings. Uh, blur is turned off, screen shake is turned off. I probably could just turn off the exposure and full screen effects. I haven't really experimented with turning exposure or full screen effects off just yet, but blur and screen shake, I 100% want those off. I've turned my HUD opacity up to 1.0 as this makes the crosshair just a little bit easier to see in my opinion. Turn the FPS counter on and of course your network statistics so you can be even angrier at desync with those higher ping rates. It is kind of crazy. I notice if I'm playing on like a 40 MS ping, game feels okay. 60, some desync. Anything above like 70 or 80, I'm like, my goodness, you can just be shooting people for days before they take any damage. A lot of people have been asking if I'm using a color blind friendly setup. I'm not sure. I just use for the enemy UI color pineapple, which I think stands out greatly. Friendly UI color purple, something that doesn't have a lot of overlap with the art design of the game, except for streets. Streets has a lot of purple tones on it and then a fire team marker color of grass or green. You definitely want show enemy names on. It gives you more visual feedback around enemies, like bigger target to look for. And then I have it set to their gamer tag. I also have speed lines turned off. I don't really like those. It's just additional visual feedback I don't necessarily need. At the very bottom of UI is probably one of the most common questions I'm seeing on comments. How do you get your weapon model to look like this? I lower my vertical offset for the rifle, which tucks that BR down and further lower on the screen so you've got more screen real estate. And you can actually go in and customize all of the other weapon types. So for a rocket launcher, you can drop it down nice and low. I think I have a rock in this uh, training mode, but for the most part, I think I just drop everything on the vertical offset 100%. So if we bring up the, the rockets here, they sit slightly lower. They still take up a lot of screen real estate. And if somebody's on your right, they're gonna you know, get past you most likely. So I am using some paddles on the back of my elite here. The back lower right is for sprint. So it's set to A, because I'm playing on bumper jumper. The uh, upper right back paddle is set to X, so I can use equipment. The back left, upper left, is set to B, so for reload, again, B on a bumper jumper layout. And I really wanna use the fourth paddle, but the way I grip the actual controller, I pretty much accidentally press it all the time with the Elite, so I'm not using that space. Um, if I were to run that back lower left paddle, it would 100% be mapped to drop weapon, so you can do those crazy cool drop shot things. As it stands, you know, just reaching down and, and tapping right on the D-pad is pretty easy to do, and it does interrupt your strafe. It kind of breaks the cardinal rule that you always want to keep your thumbs on the sticks at all times. But for me and this setup right now, that is what I'm using. In terms of like other gear, I've got a Dell 144 Hertz monitor. I'm playing the game in 2560 by 1440 uh, resolution, but a lot of that's just for YouTube content, so it looks a little bit crispier. If I had to go back and do it again, I would just buy a nice 144 Hertz 1080p monitor, um, maybe even a higher refresh rate, but gosh, I can't really peg much higher than what I'm getting with a 1080 Ti. I'm really looking forward to this game getting some sort of optimization patch. What settings are you guys using and why? I would love to know. If you have any questions, please shout out in the comments. Check out the Shyway video, and I will see you guys again in the next video. Have an awesome start to the week. Thanks for watching.